of traditions and innovations in textile manufacture in early Bronze Age Greece with the main focus on the Peloponnese. Uh, first, I will briefly introduce you to the early Bronze Age uh, in mainland Greece and the Eastern Mediterranean. Then I will present sources to study textile production and some chosen aspects of tradition and innovation in the following subjects like fibers, spinning with spinning walls, weaving and weaves. The early Bronze Age in Greece covers roughly the 3rd millennium BC. The first phase, early Hellenic one, is not well known archaeologically. The second phase, the so-called late Hellenic two, saw the peak of the culture. We come across monumental architecture, standardized pottery of excellent quality, administrative use of seals and ceilings, and early metrology using balance weights. Um, after traumatic events at the end of early Hellenic II, the next phase, early Hellenic III, so many important changes. Monumental architecture disappeared, new pottery types and styles appeared, and many new classes of objects are now present, probably brought or inspired by Anatolian and Balkan cultures and peoples. It has been suggested that uh, the gene already in the third millennium BC formed a part of the larger East Mediterranean interaction sphere with its core uh, in Syria and North Mesopotamia. The gene obviously had cultural contacts with the Near East via Anatolia, and this can be well demonstrated by, se by several classes of objects imported or adapted from the East, like pottery, the bus and the kipelon, or Syrian bottles, use of roll seals and sealing uh, on storage jars, decorated bone tubes, and finally, balance weights. Therefore, it seems to me probable that also some textile techniques and tools might have been introduced from the same areas. So let us turn to the main subject of this presentation, the manufacture of textiles. In the case of the Aegean, we deal with the problem that the sources to study textile production are rather limited. Indeed, there are no written and almost no iconographic sources from early Bronze Age Greece. On the other hand, textual and iconographic evidence of textile production from the Near East, the Egypt and also uh, Mycenaean or Late Bronze Age Greece, may give us some ideas about textile production, craftsmanship, tools, materials, techniques, organization of textile production and textile distribution. While there are almost no archaeological textiles preserved from early Bronze Age Aegean, we know of several examples of textile imprints in clay dating from the early Bronze Age. Thus, uh, the main dead data we deal with when discussing early Bronze Age Aegean textile production are commonly preserved textile tools, mainly clay, spindle walls, and blue weights. So let's start uh, our uh, discussion about uh, traditional innovation of textile manufacture with fibers. It is generally accepted that the most ancient fibers used for textile making were bust fibers with flax, hemp, and nettle. Also, tree bark fibers to produce cordage and rope may have been used since the Paleolithic, Paleolithic period. There is a solid evidence, uh, archaeobotanical evidence, for use of flax from many sites in North and South Greece from Neolithic and Early Bronze Age. Many flax seeds come to light at the excavated sites, which demonstrates that flax was used to make oil. Nevertheless, while not proved archaeologically, flax stands were of course used to produce fibers or textiles. Moreover, it has been suggested that some impressions of textiles on bases and ceilings, like those from early Bronze Age Geraki in Laconia, come from textiles made of plant fibers. However, it must be emphasized that it is, in my opinion, extremely difficult to identify the type of fiber only from the imprint, and therefore this evidence may be not that conclusive. 
using of animal fibers may be, may be seen as innovation in the context of early Bronze Age Aegean, especially as far as sheep wooling wool for spinning is, consider, is concerned. It is likely that the so-called hairy wool, which is short hair um, and coarse wool of goats and sheep, was traditionally used perhaps as early as the first bus fibers were used. However, they probably never played a main role in textile manufacture. Such short and coarse fibers were either twisted on the fingers or on the tide, or with the use of simple devices, maybe some sticks and hooks. Only with the introduction of long staple wool, which was long enough to be spun with spindle walls, animal fibers became more and more important. And finally, they changed the economies of textiles forever. Animal fibers were warmer, softer, and can be easier dyed than the plant fibers. The crucial problem here is the, the date of introduction of wool with long fibers. For the Aegean, the archaeological evidence suggests that the development of sheep with long staple wool was not completed before the Bronze Age. This means that during the Neolithic period, and possibly also during the first phases of the early Bronze Age, it was the plant fiber which was primarily used. It is also suggested that, that larger sheep with wool of better quality and quantity appeared in the Aegean only during the early Bronze Age. The evidence for that comes mainly from, the, from Thessaly and uh, Northeast Greece. However, we do not know how long this process of obtaining the long staple wool was and how long it took to spread this new invention uh, all over Greece. It seems possible that a new type of sheep and wool came to Greece within the early Bronze Age, together with other innovations from the East. Textile tools, as we will see, may perhaps support this hypothesis. Clay spindle walls are, must, are common finds on the early Hellenic sites. It is striking that clay spindle walls of early Hellenic II period look very much alike across Greece. It is of importance that similar ranges of weights are repeatedly attested at different sites. For example, very common are very heavy spindle walls of even 90 to 120 grams. Elizabeth Banks, who worked on small finds from Lebanon, speaks of standardization of production because the spindle walls are throughout mainland Greece were indeed homogeneous. Such heavy spindle walls may have been primarily used for plying or doubling yards to obtain a thick thread, possibly of plant origin. During early Hellenic III, hemispherical spindle walls still exist, so there is a di uh, direct tradition in the shape since the early Hellenic I, or maybe even now it. But other types seem to become more popular, like conical, biconical, and spherical. A special case are incised biconical spindle walls. This kind of spindle walls are well known in Anatolia, but they appear in Greece only instantly. For example, in any early Hellenic or early Bronze Age III, Lerna or Pascalio Cabos. They were probably imports from Anatolia or from the Cyclonic Islands or through Cyclonic Islands and form a part of the so called East Mediterranean International Artifacts, together with other objects I have mentioned at the very beginning. In my opinion, in my opinion, <laughs> we can discuss it later. There is no evidence that the incised biconical spindle walls had any particular advantage over the other types of spindle walls, like the shape or decoration, and for that reason, they, they would have been used in a specific way or for um, spinning particular fibers. On the other hand, we know that the new material, wool wool, may have appeared in Greece more or less at the same time. So. Would it be possible that woolly wool came to the Aegean from Anatolia together with this kind of spindle walls as an innovation package? But if so, why only several biconical incised spindle walls are known from Greece until now? 
various aspects of tradition and innovation can also be seen in weaving. The most common tools for weaving in the early Bronze Age Peloponnese are cylinders with lengthwise perforations and spools without any holes. They were very irregular in shapes and hardly baked or only sun dried. There is a tradition of such tools reaching back the Greek Neolithic, and spools without holes were also commonly known at the end of late Bronze Age. An interesting innovation in weaving can be seen in early Bronze Age dealings, where several entirely and partly preserved crescent-shaped objects came to light in the early Hellenic two and three layers. These objects are very heavy, uh, weighing even 600 grams. They were very well made and burned. <coughs> the similar tools in Greece were discovered in Thermia, Lesbos, and in the Iraqi Laconia, already mentioned by Agatha before. However, when we look at the map of the early Bronze Age Eastern Mediterranean, we can clearly see that the crescent-shaped objects were common in Anatolia. Therefore, it seems probable, or possible, that the examples of, uh, from Tyrus were either brought from them, or, alternatively, they were produced locally, as inspired by Anatolian craftsmanship. Unfortunately, the lack of clay analysis of the tools from Tyrus makes it impossible to detect their place of production. But what kind of innovation textile manufacture could be related to the specific loom weights it was also already discussed a little bit by Agatha. Various ways of weaving with pressure shaped loom weights have been suggested until now. For example, weaving in tablet weaving or on a warp weighted loom. And uh, recently, Anita Vistilasni convincingly demonstrated that they were suitable for twill, which is diagonal pattern, and for pattern weaving. Twill is much more complex than tabby, as, uh, which is also known as plain weave, and it was the most regular and common weave. Twill requires more elabor elabor elaborated setting up of the loom, and according to Lassen, crescent shaped loom weights could work very well in such a setting. The advantage, the advantage of twill over tabby lies in its elasticity, and what might also be of importance, it's more decorative character. Also, it has better insulating properties. According to experts, twill was rather woven in wool, which is much more stretchy and flexible than plant fibers. However, we also know uh, twills in flax, for example, from the Libros age Italian sign Morina di Ledro. According to uh, Bende Jorgensen and Cast uh, Aisha last paper, a woven twill is um, an important innovation dating back to the Bronze Age, but its origin are obscure. Until recently, it was thought that the earliest evidence of the twill weave comes from the fourth millennium Alisha in Anatolia. However, recently, Ben Jorgensen and Cast Aisha demonstrated that the fragments of Textile was actually only diagonally stretched, and in fact, it is a plain weave and not twill. Nevertheless, there is also an example mentioned by Baba as coming from Makkoti in Georgia, it would be dated to the third millennium BC, and we know of the already mentioned piece from Molina di Ledra, also dated to early Bronze Age, so probably twill were known already in the third millennium BC. Therefore, I believe that it is still possible that the crescent-shaped loom weights, I mean, I, I, I would like to have it, <laughs> maybe. That's my really wish. It's still possible that the crescent-shaped looms from Tiris might have been used for weaving twill, <coughs> even if this evidence, I must say, is there. Moreover, it might also support the view that the wool was already used at that time. Coming to the end of this discussion, Conventionally, making of textiles has been perceived as a traditional, rather unchanging craft with well-established techniques, tools, and materials. However, some important changes occurred during the early Bronze Age in the Eastern Mediterranean, like the introdu introduction of Rumi. And this had a significant impact also on textile production in the Aegean. 
um, a thorough combination of data, like a, um, a through a combination of data, like a thorough analysis of text titles and archaeobotanical and archaeozoological evidence, we may try to trace down these innovations in the archaeological material. More specifically, flax, linen, and other bark fibers have formed the basis of textile manufacture from the very beginnings. Archaeobotanical evidence shows remains of flax and Neolithic and early Bronze Age material. Woolly wool spread out in the Near East sometime within the 5th or 4th millennium BC, and this is still debated. We don't know actually exactly when. And it was introduced to the region probably uh, during the 3rd millennium BC. There is no direct evidence for that, but I believe that maybe some premises can be seen in the, time, in the new types of spindle walls and new weights. Both textile tools and fibers, in that case new, may have been introduced and or imported from distant areas, especially from Anatolia, and formed part of more extensive cultural and material exchange with the Eastern Mediterranean. Perhaps wool was therefore another piece of innovation package, together with pottery, raw seals, and balance weights. More careful documentation of small finds, combined with diligent work of conservators who might discover even single preserved fibers, plus more archaeological studies, are needed in order to produce new evidence of textile manufacture in the history. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs>